Hey guys, uh, I'm just going to read from the book of Hebrews today, starting in chapter 11. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. So faith is having assurance about we do not see what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith Abel still speaks even though he is dead. Abel, Abel is in heaven. By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. So much like Enoch was, was taken and didn't experience death, so some of us today in the church, the, the remnant still following and living and looking like Jesus to the rest of the world, they're going to be taken. They're not going to experience death. They're going to, they're going to rise in the rapture, which is about to take place. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you don't have faith, you're not pleasing God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him, which he does. He rewards you if you earnestly seek him with all your heart. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. So this is the same thing going on today. Some are stepping out. They're, they're modern day Noahs, like we live in the days of Noah, uh, when great wickedness just like covers covers the earth. Um, and you know, in holy fear, these guys are building an ark, which is you know just putting all their trust in Jesus Christ. He is that ark. And he's going to remove those that are washed in his blood, living holy, and uh, loving him and loving their neighbor as himself uh, in the, the rapture, right before great tribulation begins. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, like, they knew the, the promise that God had given them of, of a promised land. Their whole life, they, they lived in tents. And so, so it is today for a Christian. I mean, this, uh, this isn't our home here, this world, and we don't build treasures in it. We build treasures in heaven. Uh, these treasures are, are love and justice and righteousness and peace and uh, we, we build that up in heaven uh, uh, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God and by faith even Sarah who was past childbearing age was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise so God can do anything even somebody who's I forget, I think Sarah was 90, 90 years old. Uh, she was able to bear a child, Isaac. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, that's Abraham, who was about 100, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. So... If you're, let's say you're 75 years old today, are you still living by faith? Faith like a child? Or are you, have you sold out to all these man-made traditions and you're not bowing to the king of kings? And there's no life in you. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. 
do you do you admit you're a foreigner and stranger here on earth or have you made a home for yourself here are you confessing the lord's name to others people who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own if they had been thinking of the country they had left they would have had an opportunity to return instead they were longing for a better country a heavenly one Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So, God will be ashamed to call himself your God if you're not looking forward to heaven. If, if you're building a kingdom for yourself on this earth. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking he did receive Isaac back from the dead. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regards to their future. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. So how, how about you, rich man? Have you chosen to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin? Or will you keep living in luxury and keep sinning? Heaven or hell? Or what will it be? He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible. Do you see God who is invisible? Only then can you persevere. Otherwise, you're going to give up. By faith, he kept the Passover and the application of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. So are you disobedient or obedient to the Lord? And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gain what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning, they were sawed in two, they were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders, and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart.
In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. So if you're not being disciplined, you're, you're illegitimate. Uh, you're, not, you're not God's son or daughter. So his children are getting it. They're getting the, the spanking. Um, they're being pruned day by day so they bear more fruit for him. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and maybe not so much in these last days, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share in His holiness. So He disciplines us so we can share in His holiness and be holy as He is holy, and stand apart so people know that Jesus is the light. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord, and no one will make the rapture without holiness. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you.